I saw a comment from Baradwi there, and he said, you know, um, it's you know when I talked about the Russian. He said it's probably okay for a Russian to tell that joke. Absolutely, you know. And I've had similar situations in countries like Nigeria and many countries where I've realised that as a foreigner, I have to be very careful with yeah. certain aspects because I might be perceived differently. I mean, that's the wonderful thing about being an Australian in Europe, actually, because we can kind of make fun about everybody. Whereas if you're a German making fun of a French person or a French person making fun of a Brit, it can be more sensitive. Greg, I'm sure you've got something to say about yeah, well, that. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm afraid uh, time flies and we're sort of yeah. coming to the end of this section. But I just wanted to add, maybe just to summarise where we are, you know, we, we, we covered community, we've looked at coping, which is the idea, I mean, just what you said right at the start, Jamie, is an amazing idea, isn't it? That we can have the same experience and if we've switched on our sense of humour and it's an attitude as much as a skill, God, we'll have low attention and, and stress. That's really fantastic right now. We're going to move on to the next part. By the way, Freed, Walter says sorry about his comment about the joke. <laughs> well, you don't need to be sorry. Don't be sorry. What we were saying oh, is, okay. yes, they, there should be jokes in Germany. You just need to understand the right ones. I probably couldn't tell them. No, you know, oh, no, no, you, you, now no, you can understand why I'm such a boring person. No, Frederick, it's not true. No, Frederick, yeah, because as you know, I, I should tell you, I lived in Germany for five years. And, and, you know, when I moved to Germany from the U, people in the UK where I was living before, they said German people don't have a sense of humor. That's not true at all. I love living in Germany. I had so many funny friends. The people who don't have a sense of humor are the people from Stuttgart. <laughs> All right, so story. Stuck up, please don't switch off now. Uh, okay, so we've covered community, we've covered coping, we've covered German jokes, uh, the, the rights and wrongs of that. We're now going to move on to change, uh, which is part of Jamie's model. And, you know, obviously this covers a lot, but, you know, we're talking about leadership today, and, and that's what leaders, leaders are, really. They're, they're, they're pushers of change, they're catalyzers of changes, and they're peddlers of influence. So just a few things to start us off here. Leaders communicate, and it's absolutely proven. If you slip a few jokes in there, if you tell a funny story, people will listen to you longer, they will remember what you say, and they will take action based on what you say way more than if you didn't do that. So if we said no more on leadership, that would be enough. So I, I, I think humor is so important for leadership. Well, what do you, you think, guys? Uh, Greg, but maybe you're, you're probably the best guy to talk about that. I mean, with your book, you speak so much about connecting and the importance of communication. So well, why don't you kick us off? Well, I, I, there's so much to say. I mean, we could have spent the whole 45 minutes on communication and using stories. Stories we know, Freed, releases oxytocin, makes people trust you more. That's what you need in leaders. You can reflect your values in a story. You can wrap up your values in a joke. You can take what you need to say and wrap it in these things. We often say to people at London Business School, and I'm, I'm often dealing with engineers, so it doesn't go well down well at first, that data doesn't mean anything to anybody. It will not persuade them. Mm. What data, the, the only thing people need is the data that means something to them. And the easiest way to make a bridge from that data to their heart and their soul mm -hmm. is through stories and joke telling. Free. Yeah. yeah, you know, oh, oh um, I'm no, free. okay. So I just thought about the storytelling aspect in the brain because researchers in Princeton they have found that when somebody tells a story and when somebody else listens, listens in the brain scanner, their brains sync up. So storytelling is unique because it synchronizes our brain with the brain of another person. And this is really magic happening. And, and you know, the more people like the other person's story and the more connected they feel, the more synchronized their brains become. And sometimes the listener even anticipated the brain activity of the speaker. So while listening, they yeah. engage so much that they could anticipate where the speaker was going. And storytelling is in our DNA. So if you can put information into a story, that's always the way to go. I, I love that as a, as, a, as, a, as a thought, that sharing a story and when someone's listening to someone else's story, your brains become in sync. As, as a story writer, as a comedy writer, I, I love that as a thought. Um, mm -hmm. And for, for me, the thing with humor and, and leadership as well, just on a, on a very simple basis, is mm -hmm. when you use humor, as a leader, it humanizes you immediately. So it kind of, it, I mean, very much echoed in your, your book, Greg, the, the Human Edge. You know, humor is one thing that really does make us feel and seem human to everyone else. And again, at a time of crisis or a time of real change, 
that's so important for any leader, isn't it? To kind of just say, I'm just like, you know, I'm one of, I'm one of us. We're, we're all in it together as, as human beings. 